So then if this girl was all up in my ear talking about having a wonderful gentleman like this in my bed is surely going to make the other girls jealous, I'll make them jealous. <laughs> at least, how about you at least get the fuck up on top of me right now? <laughs> I'm going to give a disclaimer before this video even starts because I know how rowdy the internet is nowadays. And this is definitely risky territory with this show. But I'm just going to say it now. Any jokes that I say, they're jokes. And it's all talked about in good fun. You know what? I'm not even giving a disclaimer. I don't care. If someone wants to be mad enough to get upset about this show after this show's been already been out for however long at this point, I don't even care. But if you haven't started Mushoku Tensei season two, there will be spoilers up to the most recent episode being episode three, which released today. When we start this season, they actually dropped like a special episode where we get a little backstory on the selfie incident and just where she ended up because we got like no info on her at all all of season one so then we see this girl out here feasting on some pastries and some big wild boar pulls up on them but sylphie's falling from the sky like a fucking comet and then i don't remember the specifics with her hair if i recall i thought her green hair was genetic and that's why people viewed her as like that race that people didn't like but then we see her hair turn gray and maybe this is something they're going to touch on later or if this is something they already mentioned and i forgot but she comes in from the top rope and completely decimates this boar and flattens the guy out rest in peace but with all of that we see that that this princess girl basically takes her under her wing because she was thankful for her coming in swooping in and saving her so then she has her rock the men in black shades and basically be her second servant but they're at a little ballroom dance later and she's talking to Sylphie and then I, I don't know if this guy's her brother or something but we hear him coming up from the background talking about some do my eyes deceive me or are you conspiring <laughs> weird oh grapple how do you do you heard that we were just talking about what we were having for an afternoon snack it was nothing serious and then the nigga starts trauma dumping he's like damn speaking of snacks i hear that my noble sister whose mother is a lawful queen while mine is a concubine and i had to look that up i didn't even know what that word meant but it means that she's basically a mistress so it sounded like he was upset that he didn't get good cake or something. Unless they're talking about some like royalty stuff that I'm not understanding because this nigga is really fixated on these berries. It sounded like he was dissing her at the same time though because he was like, Ariel, let me hear that singing one more time because that's the only reason you ever need to be taking the public stage. And then he goes around the corner and starts conspiring about Fitz, AKA Sylphie. Sylphie starts having like a little panic attack because it feels like everyone's like closing in on her. She bumps into someone, dude picks up her hand and is like, damn, these hands feel a bit girlish, don't they? So so then obviously Ariel had to let those pipes bang and then she starts singing the intro to Frozen 3 so after she finishes she was like yeah guys my brother just wanted me to sing dude pulls up like he's about to punch her in her mouth and says that's my sister brought shut up man and then dude has gluttony from FMAB standing right next to him like come on go back to your show so then like the next day or two Sylphie gets invited to sleep in the same room with the princess because I guess she's been having nightmares and I, I felt like something was gonna go down just knowing this show so then the princess was scaring me a little bit because it was the fashion in which she was doing it. She pushes her on the bed, gets all up on top of her, and is like, oh, I'm joking. Because at that point, if I'm Sylphie, I'm not thinking this is a joke. I think I'm about to get assaulted. And then the princess kind of blames it on her. She's like, damn, why would you even think I would go that far? That's kind of mean. But then proceeds to say right after that, next sentence out of her mouth, oh, but that look on your face made it a little tempting, I'm not gonna lie. The look of fear? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> But no, earlier that day, there was some monkey business going on. And it looked like Gluttony was chilling with a girl very similar looking to Yuzu from Hell's Paradise. I don't know, like a younger version. But then that same girl later in the night comes up and ambushes them. Trying to either eliminate Sylphie or the princess or both of them. I don't even remember, but Sylphie was giving her that fucking work though. She definitely was. And they're about to get skewered, but then Sylphie sends her into orbit. And the princess isn't really dealing with the shit that's going on over there. So they decide to leave the kingdom and Sylphie accompanies her. And now they're going to be moving as a party, it looks like. And that's the last we see of her because it was like that initial special episode. Mushoko Tensei is one of those shows where I could genuinely say every episode I have watched season one up until this first episode zero of season two every episode is always enjoyable and i feel like everything is meaningful but no okay so we meet up with rudius again and he's going through his depression arc he's with this new party of people consistent of this tall sort of brolic girl who seems like she's a powerhouse but then we got this other girl sarah we got a healer we got another wizard and i'm not gonna lie to you even though he mentions that like the way Sarah talks to him is very similar to Eris. I didn't expect him and Sarah to get involved in any way. And I don't even know why I was thinking that because I forgot what fucking show this is. And they're trying to formulate a plan on how to take on this mission. And it's like anything he suggests, she has a rebuttal for it instantaneously. It's like, girl, just relax. I got this. Like, But he's not even confident in himself like that yet. But it's like they're just kind of letting her verbally abuse the man. 
He's like, um, sir, I got a suggestion. After I delay the numbers, then maybe we could... Nigga, just stick to Stalin and that's all you need to do. She's very feisty, you know, but these are the types of girls he likes. You know, Eris was the same way. And then look what happened. She left him in the dust. So then they're trying to take out these white grizzlies and the mission's looking very easy. But then Rudy sticks his ear to the ground and I guess he's hearing something going on down there and they actually have a different foe and everything's popping off rudius is kind of like in his own mind he's folding a little bit and i've been i was waiting for him to pop off because obviously seeing him in the previous season he could incinerate every single fucking livid bead within like a 20 kilometer radius so then he finally snaps out of it walks up what are you doing man Saudi? don't worry leave this to me and this nigga puts his staff to the sky and calls it a fucking infernal spirit bomb i feel like the animation for michelle katetsu is not appreciated enough because like whenever they do really want to try with like the particle effects it's always so crisp and fluid and like there's all these like ripples in the air and he just blasts their at like it's so fucking nice after that whole shebang they're skinning the bears for their fur or whatever and then Sarah looks at him. She's like, thanks, I owe you one. This little quote in itself, I did not know how big of a situation this would end up being. But I will say another part of this show that I feel like is not talked about enough, and I think it's just because it's really starting, is Rudius's character development because he had it in season one. Like we see him go from this just extra horny, perverted man into an individual who actually takes like this shit seriously and the situation he's in seriously and develops relationships genuine relationships and connections over time to where it's not all about like the sexual aspect of it so then seeing him sit by the fireplace at the end of this episode crying to himself and he has this little moment of growth where he's like i lost a bit but i haven't lost everything so i've got to stay positive and just keep moving and that's how you really got to look at it so it was it was a good thing to see him realize that and then throw edis's hair into the fire to sort of like close the book on that story it's like kind of emotional because it really does like you it's just one of those characters that you see developing like right in front of you like a very a situation similar to thorfinn it's a very it seems like a similar situation in terms of like how rudy is for this first initial episode was like sitting here in front of these bears like okay they could just kill me right now i don't care but when that second episode starts we see him training this nigga's belt a little bit <laughs> he's got he's been in the weight room like his physique is stellar. And also the intro, they've always been good with their intros. The way they ease into it, rather than having an actual opening sequence, they just make parts of the episode the opening sequence for the song. I do like the way they do that. So then we see him doing some shit around the town and then he ends up talking to Sarah again and she asks him to take another job on with them. And they go to the boss arena of the uh, Twin Gargoyles from Elden Ring. I don't even know why that shit was a thing. His little observational hockey eye kicked in and saw that she was about to trip. So then he caught her and he obviously got a grasp of some circumference. If that was her the episode prior, she would have probably pushed him off the side of that cliff. So, I mean, that's character development right there in itself. But once this happened, I was like, damn, is he about to have a fourth girl on his rostic? And I was actually kind of surprised because I, that's just so many women. And he's kind of doing it effortlessly. So these dragons start spawning out of the wall and they get into a little squabble. They're doing what they normally do. They go to work, whatever. But Sarah being the aggressor that she is, obviously has to always add her input into things. Yo, get your head out of your ass and help us fight. Damn, dog. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> She's always get, but these are the girls that like you the most. The ones that bully you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. The ones that bully you are the ones that like you the most. But then we see his dad drop from the sky and not actually his dad, but this guy really resembles his dad a little bit. And he just starts getting fucking freaky. This is why words are so important because Rudius's group and this other guy's group, they eliminate all the enemies. And I felt so bad for him. He's like, hey, what's going on? I'm Timothy from Counter Arrow. How do you do? Uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> there was like a miscommunication about the mission. And then the dragons found like a tunnel and ended up going from one area to the next. So then the missions ended up overlapping. But yeah, see, after this, Sarah's trying to be so nice. And I understand you started off on the wrong foot. I get at least say sorry, though. She invites him to go celebrate out. And when we see them having a good time out on the town the dude that they just had this altercation with pulls back up and he's just letting his emotions flow saying that the guy who he punched in the face is too nice but then he really starts getting on rudy he, he says i'm gonna be honest with you kid out of this group out of all the people in this area you're the fucking worst you always seem to be so worried how other people see you and it just doesn't make sense to me and if there's one thing i really fucking hate it is that grin on your face just stop fucking smiling you swear you have this shit so bad get a fucking grip bitch. like we can take this shit outside i will pummel you kid i swear he really was catching multiple strays for no reason there was no and i understand alcohol brings out the worst in people but like damn but we later learned that episode that Sarah and the green-haired guy were out on a mission with the crew excluding Rudius. 
and that the green haired guy got mauled, he's dead, and they're assuming Sarah's dead since she's out in the blizzard. This man, Rudius, they tell him this. He's like, damn, that shit must suck. I'm gonna take my leave. Have a good night, guys. He opens the door, puts his staff to the sky. This nigga's the rain man. He just complete. there's no more snow. See you next winter. And we're seeing like some of the power that he could have been unleashing this whole time. It's like kind of gruesome the way he's killing them because the way he's been doing it before has kind of been like, it seemed a little bit more civil. And the green haired guy is under a pile of all these buffalo or whatever. So he was dinner. But then we see Sarah lodged into the tree Ussy. That was... I've never said I've like I've heard I've seen that joke on Instagram multiple times I've never verbally said the Ussy jokes and I didn't like it coming out of my mouth <laughs> I was not a fan of that but see this is that underrated animation that I was talking about because we see Rudius instantly bolt after her and this nigga starts moving like he's a one piece character or something with the I, like I don't know if this is he's moving with some efficiency and just the little details of like the tree trying to get its grimy hands on his face and then him just incinerating it without even saying a word. That shit was clean too. When I saw them in the cave, he didn't have his shirt on. She was barely clothed. I was like, okay, they're gonna get to it in this fucking cave right now. So they get up, they're leaving. Sarah tries grabbing him and is like, listen, I'm glad you came to rescue me. And he's like more than in right now. But at the end of the episode, I knew it was fucking wraps at this point because she's wearing his hoodie. I don't know how it is around the world, but if you give a girl your hoodie, especially in the middle school high school scene if your girl's walking around publicly with your hoodie you're dating <laughs> they are dating at this point there is no and i i know she had to wear it coming on the way back but it's like we're back in town you could go back home really quick change and give it to me so if she's gonna go home tonight with my hoodie see you later no i'll see you tonight <laughs> and then we see her getting all up and cozy in it like it's her own yeah come on man but see with the first episode we got him burning eris's hair and then with the second episode we got him locking away roxy's undies because at any time he's been in a situation he's been clenching these shits like it's about a on her or something so i think this is good for him with just these two episodes alone like someone who is either a hater of the show or just like isn't really like digesting what's actually going on they're gonna see shit like the hair and the underwear and think it's like oh this nigga's just a pervert blah 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 and like while he is i'm not taken away from that i understand that part it's also symbolic to like the shit he's going through mentally and how you just gotta let things go sometimes i feel like with the roxy thing instead of burning them He's assuming that she's going to be coming back. So that's why he has those preserved in a wooden cabinet rather than burning Eris's hair where he feels like that relationship is done. That's the way I'm interpreting it. But no, so the real reason I made this video was episode three. Sarah asked him out to go on a date basically because she needs to get a new dagger since hers became dull. All right. But we see that they even bought matching daggers. Like they're a couple, they're official now. So now this is where shit started getting a little fucking out of control because we're chilling at the pub and now she's just teasing. I don't know what she's doing. She, she's got to stop. She said, see it all that stuff made me want a new breastplate. Well, I bought it a little while back, so it's gotten a little tight. Dang, girl, stop. <laughs> stop. Stop. And then after that, she's like, geez, all you men are the same. As she's pulling off her vest, looking down at herself. What do you expect me to do? We're the only two in this pub. What do you want me to do? Go look at the concrete in between the bricks on the wall? <laughs> what do you want me to do seriously tell me so then she starts talking about how she drinks more when she's with him and then she's like i wonder why maybe it's because i feel a bit more comfortable she's saying she wanted to talk a little bit more he's like all right another tavern then she's sitting here with her pinky in her mouth man dr evil if you don't stop this shit for real she then says maybe we could go back to your room okay uber's outside i got us the horse and carriage xl we could head back over there right now but no so he brings her back he has the yankee candle already set up and this one that's looking like it's the scent of like a vanilla bean or a coconut breeze brutus i just want you to know that i'm really grateful to you and i mean i would have i would have died if you didn't swoop in like my knight in shining armor and pick me up so i mean <laughs> i can't say that <laughs> We see her basically giving the green light. She's like, okay, well, just go ahead, do it. We see the way that Rudius put her down onto the bed gracefully. And he's getting the shit going. And then we see that it's just sort of his EDR, unfortunately. It's the thing I do like about this show is they're not afraid to put those real, real relatable moments into it. It's like he's clearly been in the wrong mental space about just life in general different females whatever so if you really let that marinate in your head for too long and just sit there and you do nothing about it i'm sure he really hasn't even been bricked up any time within the last however long it's been since that heiress incident maybe not even once i feel like more ladies need to be educated on this stuff because this shit ruins lives <laughs> this shit ruins friendships relationships friends with benefits whatever you want to call it 
you see Rudy is sitting here clearly distraught. He's hitting himself. He's hitting himself, hoping to like jumpstart his fucking willy. And then she's, it's always this shit, man. <laughs> I'm not really even into you or anything like that. I just felt like I owed you one, so I want to repay my debt. So don't get the wrong idea. Trash ass nigga, man. It's always, <laughs> you can't escape it. She has the man on all fours naked, but you know, I, I guess I also have to take into account that this is probably Sarah's first time doing this shit as well. So I mean, in that situation, it's like, it is embarrassing. So he takes this shit right to the bar and starts drinking his heart away. That's what you shouldn't do. <laughs> but he's on a rampage. And then here walks in the Hall of Fame instigator. He's trying to start an altercation off the bat, talking about, damn, is that Quagmire? What the fuck are you moping about? You have a shitty day or something? I'll bet you probably did because I mean, every day is shitty for you. When, <laughs> when shit gets rough, you usually run anyway. So I guess you ran right to alcohol this time. And then what next? Right off of the ah! Before while that left, he swung that shit before. I don't know where he got that from. Maybe it's just the alcohol talking. I don't know. I've seen people unlock new abilities when they're like three, four drinks in. So maybe it's that. But Rudy is just not taking this shit anymore. And I wouldn't either. What are you always trying to pick fights for? Isn't this shit what you wanted? Fuck is wrong with grinning. Is it that you want me to take after you and, and go insulting people every fucking second of the day? Because that doesn't seem too joyful to me. The reason I keep smiling is because I don't want people to hate me. That's it. So please inform me what the fuck about that pisses you off. Why does me smiling get you angry? But no, so Rudy just gave him like five punches and it didn't seem like any of them really left a dent. He might need to get back in the gym a bit more. I do like that this guy sort of had like a 180 moment and was like, I'm sorry about that. Tell me about your incident. Yeah, but Rudy tells him his whole life story about Aries, about this girl, everything. So then he decides he's going to take him to the red light district. And Rudy ends up getting paired up with Elise. See, it was actually the perfect situation too, because I guess Rudy has saved her sister. So then if this girl was all up in my ear talking about having a wonderful gentleman like this in my bed is surely going to make the other girls jealous, I'll make them jealous. <laughs> Elise, how about you at least get the fuck up on top of me right now? <laughs> so she takes off her little robe. I could already tell by curvature of her thighs and everything that she's going on right there. They don't explicitly show it, but I could tell that there is definitely some weight back there. I could feel it. I think I just showed this little scene and my computer just shook a little bit. It almost toppled over. <laughs> but and see, the funny thing is he may have folded twice because with this Elise situation, they come out of this. He's like, nah, I couldn't get it to work. And she tried many things. I don't know what she tried. No, but actually, that's just what like love can do to you for real. Like, I don't know if he's upset about the Sarah thing or the heiress thing or just everything all together. If you, if you have your heart and mind set on something, however beautiful a woman you want to throw in front of that person, it's not going to change the fact that they're only going to be interested in what they want. And I saw someone say in the comments that he's a division one fumbler, and I would definitely have to agree with that because it's like he's talking to i don't know what this guy's name is not like i could go look right now i'm just too lazy but rudy's is still intoxicated and and he's actually given rudy is good advice he's had good character development over these last two episodes but see this is where he folded for the third fucking time and this one it was his fault but i mean how did this girl even know about his whereabouts he starts going on a drunk rant like a woman ought to be stacked like ellie i don't want sarah she's built like a kid compared to elise Sarah sees him, she goes up to him, and she smacks him so hard that the show took a screenshot of it. And she said, you're the worst, never let me see you again. And she threw away their matching dagger. I really don't think you come back from that. He's in such shock, they walk away, he picks up the dagger, he looks at the shit. <laughs> the fact that Soldat could react, because this shit was going through his chest. He instantaneously, without hesitation, attempts to off himself. I just did not expect it at all. And he starts falling apart and then Soldat invites him to go adventure with them for one of their missions. So I don't know if he's gonna be depressed again. I hope not. I hope this is just a little like hiccup, but um, no, you can't be doing that over a girl. That's completely on him. And if he wants to make amends with her and fix that situation, he has to do that on his own. We see the elf girl that Roxy was traveling with, the one who just can't keep her clothes on. She hears people talking about Rudeus and then she's like, oh, let me hear more about that. And she starts flirting with the dude. And she's just horny. She says, if you can remember more, I'll let you have your way with me. That is some crazy fucking shit to say. I had the guy just drop his whole location and everything. I don't even know if that was real. I think he just came up with the f closest place in his head. But that's where the show's at so far. I think this show is definitely getting a bit more recognition now. But I think it does still need to be a bit bigger. Like, I feel like ReZero is still a bigger show than this. And I feel like this show surpasses ReZero just with the first season and these four episodes alone. All the characters surrounding him, they all have like interactions that feel very real when you compare it to like the real world and like the whole ed thing he was going through how quickly he was flipping the knife on himself 
instead of like sitting there and having like an internal struggle and he just fucking did it it's like i feel like that makes it a bit more intense shit like that just makes the show move at a faster pace and it just makes it more interesting um and my prediction for this season it's off to a very strong start i could see it easily being like a 9-5 this show is just so good man it feels like a really complete show and i'm excited to see how it progresses throughout the rest of the season oshinoko review will be coming out in probably like a week or so so we'll see what's going on with that but without further ado on to the next one and yeah that's it